Hey, Dara, how you doing? Great. Thank you very much. Am I getting you from Boston or Nashville? Where am I getting you from? I am right outside of Boston, baby. Now, when you say right outside of Boston, are we talking the 508 kind of stuff or the 617? You got to know which is which. We're talking the 781. Fancy. Oh, yeah. That's right. You know you've made it in professional wrestling when you can still live in Massachusetts year-round, uh, I must say. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. So coming up in about a week and a half, you are in the main event of a big pay-per-view. That's very exciting for me, to say the least, as somebody who's been following you for more than 10 years. Is it such a big thrill to be in a main event? You know, it's uh, it's obviously a little added, you know, added pressure, really, for myself. I. You know, whether I'm the opening match or mid card or the main event, I have the same goal. You know, I think everybody in Impact does. Wrestlers, I think everywhere do. So go out there, steal the show, win, have a great match, you know, and, and go out and celebrate that night. But being that it is the main event of Slammiversary, which is, you know, our biggest pay per view of the year, and especially this year, you know, it's like a, you know, some of a, re- a rebirth, a restart almost for Impact. There's been a lot of moving parts. So I feel that, you know, this main event, this pay-per-view, there's a lot of eyes on us for good reason. There's a lot of eyes. So we have to go out there and deliver. And, you know, being the main event of that show, you better go out there and do it because if not, you know, it, it's it's on us to deliver and show the people, you know, what we got and what we can do. And, and I'm looking forward to, to seeing how it all pans out, man. Do I have it correct that there's going to be a mystery opponent in the main event? I can't tell you that. It's a mystery. <laughs> I'm kidding. Yes. <laughs> yeah. No, the, the, uh, is myself, Ace Austin, Trey Miguel, and said mystery opponent in the four-way. Got it. Well, that's yet another reason to be watching this big show right there. And what I hear every time I speak to somebody from Impact is, this is the best locker room I've ever been in. Everyone is supportive of one another, regardless of what happens in the ring. I assume you're going to you know, be pushing the same narrative with good reason? Well, yeah. I mean, I, I've said it before, like, you know, it, it is cliche in the world of wrestling and, you know, probably in, in sports and stuff that, you know, we're like a family and stuff like that, you know, but along those lines, yes, you know, I feel that we are, you know, are we all, is everybody best friend? No, but everybody is there for impact. Everybody wants impact to succeed. And we do that by supporting each other and, and trying to help each other. Like it's, it's, you know, it's never a negative thing. It's, you know, somebody sees something that they didn't think was right or they shouldn't have done, you know, we'll talk to each other about it. And that's how people grow as, you know, performers and as, you know, people. So we're, we're there to support each other with the good and the bad. And I think we very are much so like a family out there, whether it's cliche or not, but you, you know, you talk me into it. Right. Right. I believe if I've done my math correctly, you're six and a half years into impact. And that's very impressive. Very few people stay at their job for more than two or three years these days. And was there ever a moment, because coming to Impact was after you had already been in the business for 10, 12 years, something like that. Was there ever a moment where wrestling almost wasn't going to be the full-time career? No, never, never. I mean, ever since I joined wrestling school, like that was, that was my, my main goal. And my, you know, my love for the business has never has never changed. Um, and as far as like being a part of impact, you know, this is, this has been my home, like you said, for six plus years at this point. And I wouldn't be here. Uh, you know, I wouldn't stay at impact. I wouldn't be in wrestling. If it wasn't something I love, it's, it, you know, it, it hurts too much to do it. If you don't love it, you know what I mean? Uh, this is always my goal to have this be my, my one and only job to be my career. And, uh, you know, I'm lucky that it has been my job for so long at this point. And, you know, I, I don't plan on stopping anytime soon, knock on wood. Um, but, you know, impact is, it is my home and I'm proud, I'm proud to be, you know, the longest tenured guy at impact right now. Before wrestling became your number one, was there another hobby or field that you were all about? For me personally, it was the NBA and then it was punk rock and then wrestling kind of became my number one thing. What about you? Uh, you know, I, as a kid, you know, in, in like middle school and high school, I, I loved sports and I loved basketball. Basketball was going to be my thing. I was going to play basketball, but you know, we, we know how that story, <laughs> we know how that story ends. Um, you know, I, I played basketball and stuff through middle school and high school, but it, once I, I almost rediscovered wrestling, you know, I was a fan of wrestling as a kid growing up, 
you know, and then I fell out of it a bit to do, you know, play those other sports and stuff. But then, you know, I got back into it when I was, you know, 14 or so, 15, and I was absolutely hooked. And at that point, I was like, I need, I need this to be my life. So from that point on, that's, that was my number one goal. As somebody who digs around for a lot of old, cool, vintage wrestling stuff, somebody recently showed me a thing from 88 or 89 where a bunch of the NWA All-Stars were playing a charity basketball game. Did you ever wind up in a charity basketball game in the midst of your wrestling success? Uh, no, not yet. I would love that to happen, though. But I did, I did a basketball game did break out in the tag team match that I had up in Canada one time. It was myself, myself and Davey Richards against the Bromans, Robbie E. and Jesse Goddard. And we had, we're on a basketball court, and there's a basketball hoops, and there's a ball. So a game broke out, and I hit the game-winning free throw. So that's a little history for you. That should go on your Wikipedia page next to the championships, <laughs> to say the least. I've been trying to get on there. I keep taking it off. Bummer. <laughs> well, one of my favorite things about your career is based on when you got started, without naming names here, you've worked with the best of the best on and off, a lot of them before they were the best of the best, some of them while they were the best of the best. When was it that you kind of realized that the generation that you started with was the generation and just not not a bunch of newcomers that were going to be journeymen? You know, that's, that's a good question. But I think, you know, my time in Ring of Honor – you know, I got to work with, you know, guys like Brian Danielson and or Daniel Bryan and, and, and uh, Tyler Black and guys like that and um, being able to tag with Davey Richards. Like, I think it was my time in ROH. And then once I got to Impact, it was like a lot of the guys I had worked with, you know, whether it be the Indies or Ring of Honor before or at Impact, like w- those guys, we were slowly becoming the stars. You know what I mean? And then all of a sudden, it's all of my, fr- you know, it's a lot of my friends. And like you said, guys that I had worked with, like every, we're all main events in the shows. And at that point, it's like, oh, this is, this is pretty sweet. Like it just, ha- you know, it kind of happens, not out of nowhere, but when you look back, it's like, wow, it did just, all of a sudden it was like, we, you guys are the guys, we're the guys, this is our generation. And, and now there's a new crop of guys coming up behind us. It's, you know, it's a, the endless machine. It keeps going and going, but. Uh, you know, it's been awesome to see a lot of my friends succeed, whether it be Impact or elsewhere, to see that guys that I always enjoyed being with and I was friends with and guys I enjoyed working with in the ring. It's it's really cool to see success all over the world in every different company. That's when it's cool when you have friends in every professional wrestling company all over the world who are champions and are succeeding. It's like, all right, we we did something good, guys, you know. Right, I'm sure it's defined who's picking up the tab depending on when you meet out, of course. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I mean, I always, I always try to push it on somebody else, but it, it doesn't always work. I try. <laughs> right. It's also interesting to me that you're married to another wrestler. Like you, I work in the same gig as my wife. Not everybody can pull that off successfully. Any tips for people listening that are working with a girlfriend or a boyfriend or a partner as to how you can make that work and peacefully coexist in the same field yeah you know i think for us it's been you know when we're home we're able to be home and have our home life and then when we're traveling and doing in wrestling that's when we're in wrestling like obviously wrestling is constantly a part of our life but we still try to have our separate home life where we can shut off from our work from our job shut off enjoy our time together and then also to still have our own things that we do on our own you know what i mean i I, no matter who you are, if you're surrounded by the same person, 24, seven, three, six, five, you're probably going to get you know, into a couple arguments here and there. But if you still have time, you know, if you have your own hobbies or interests and stuff that you go and do, and your wife or girlfriend or boyfriend goes out and does that, I, I think that that helps because, you know, especially now during the pandemic, I mean, absence, I thought absence made the heart grow fonder because, you know, we'd be able to travel and stuff or I'd be traveling somewhere different than my wife. But, you know, now we've been home together for so long and it's still going good. I'm proud to say it's, it's, I mean, that's my opinion. I mean, when you ask her, she might say something different, but it's like, you know, you still have, still have, you still have your separate interests. And I think that that really helps. That makes sense to me. So two quick questions, then you're free for me. And the first one is any good TV or film recommendations, because 
although you have been on TV a lot lately, you've also been holed up at home a lot lately. That is very true. Um, we, we've done pretty well, pretty good at binging some shows that uh, we didn't watch before. But the last one that I thought was really good was Queen of the South. It was, uh, it's on Netflix now. I think it's a, it's a USA show. But Queen of the South was really good. Uh, me and my wife both both fans of it. So I'll put, I'll put that one out there for right now. Great. That will go in my queue. Thank you. So in closing, Eddie, any last words for the kids? Uh, you know, I, I'm a guy who says anything is possible. And, you know, it's for a reason. I, I wanted to become a professional wrestler. This is my dream. You know, everybody out there, follow your dream, whatever it is, and continue to support pro wrestling. Uh, I know I appreciate it. We all do. So support, you know, wrestling, support Impact Wrestling, and check out Slam Anniversary, July 18th, 8 o'clock. Don't forget. Well, don't tell anyone else, but we in this household are rooting for you to win that title. So best of luck, and thank you for your time. My man, I appreciate it. You have a good night, brother.